Let's practice subtracting fractions with uncommon denominators together. Remember that in order to add or subtract fractions, we need common denominators. To find the least common denominator between two fractions, we have to find the LCM or LCD, least common multiple or least common denominator. So for number one, notice that we have the fraction 2 thirds take away 1 fourth, and they don't have common denominators, so we can't really subtract them right now because they have different sized pieces. But we can go ahead and use a strategy called the ladder method or the cake method, whatever you want to call it, and we got to find out their LCM. So if you go ahead and see what goes into 3 and 4, it's going to be 1, that's their GCF. 1 goes into 3 3 times, 1 goes into 4 4 times, and 3 and 4 have nothing else in common besides 1. So if you go ahead and multiply these outside numbers, if you go ahead and say, okay, 1 times 3 is going to be 3, 3 times 4 is going to be 12, then the LCM or LCD, the first time they meet is going to be 12. So that's the denominator that we're going to use. So we go ahead and take this 2 thirds minus this 1 fourth, right? And how do we make them 12? Well, the 3 is going to multiply by 4, and the 4 is going to multiply by 3, those diagonals. So 3 multiplied by 4, 2 multiplied by 4, top, same top and bottom. And over here, let's do a times 3 times 3. So if we do that, then both denominators will be the same. So let's go ahead and put this over 12. 2 times 4 will get us 8. 1 times 3 will get us 3, so we have 8 minus 3. And so 8 minus 3 is 5, so we have a difference here, or the answer to a subtraction problem of 5 twelfths. Let's check out number 2. For number 2, we have 3 fourths take away 1 third. And notice that they have the same denominators of 4 and 3, so we don't have to really write that work again. Uh, we can go ahead and just go ahead and write 3 fourths, and we're going to take away this 1 third. We know that the denominators are going to meet at 12 for the first time. Uh, just because we already proved that in the last example. And so we can multiply these by 3 and 3 and by 4 and 4. So the LCD will always be 12 for 4 and 3. And so let's put these both over 12. And then 3 times 3 will be 9. And then 1 times 4 will be 4. So we're going to have 9 minus 4. That's going to be 5. So we're going to have 5 twelfths here. Okay, so that's going to be the first time they meet is 12, and so we can go to subtract. So we actually got the same answer as in number one. Here's number three. For number three, we have some different denominators here. So we have thirds and we have halves. Okay, so when do two and three meet for the first time? So we can go ahead and set this up, two and three. Now they're neighbor numbers, so they don't have anything in common. We could say that GCF is going to be one. One goes into two, two times. One goes into three, three times. And if we go ahead and multiply these outer numbers here, then 1 times 2 is 2, and 2 times 3 is 6. So the LCD, or the first time these denominators can be the same, evenly is going to be at 6. Okay, so we can go ahead and take this 2 thirds and subtract this 1 half. Now to get 6, remember that we can use these diagonals. So 3 times 2 will get you 6, and 2 times 3 will get you 6. So we can multiply the 3 by 2, and take the second fraction and multiply by 3 top and bottom. All right, so if we go ahead and do that, then the denominator is going to match for both. It's going to be six, and then two times two is going to be four, and then one times three is going to be three, so we have four minus three. That's going to be one, so we're going to have one over six. For number four, we have three-fifths, and we're taking away one-third, so we have to get these denominators to match. So when do they meet for the first time? Let's go ahead and see. Five and three are both prime numbers, so they have nothing in common besides one. One goes into five five times, one goes into three three times, if we go ahead and multiply these on the side, let's see, 1 times 5 is 5, times 3, that's going to be 15. So the first time they meet is going to be at 15. Okay, so let's take this 3 fifths here, and let's take away 1 third. And our goal is to make them both 15. So to get 15, the 5 will multiply by the diagonal of 3, and the 3 will multiply by the diagonal of 5. So let's multiply the 3 fifths by 3 over 3 and multiply the 1 third by 5 over 5. Cool, all right. So we're going to get 15 for both, right? So both will have 15 on bottom. 3 times 3 is going to be 9. 1 times 5 is going to be 5, so we have 9 minus 5. 9 minus 5 is equal to 4, so we're going to get 4 15 all right? Can't be simplified. 4 and 15 have nothing in common besides 1. For number 5, let's see. We have 3 fifths, okay? three-fifths, and we're taking away one-half. So when do five and two meet for the first time? Let's go ahead and see. Five and two, let's go ahead and set this up. Let's see. Five and two, they're both prime numbers, so their GCF is one. One goes into five, five times. One goes into two, two times. 
So if we go ahead and check to see what do they, uh, when do they meet for the first time? One times five is five, five times two is 10. So the LCD for five and two is gonna be 10. Okay, so let's take this three fifths. We're gonna take away this one half and they meet at 10, right? So five multiplied by two will get us that and two multiplied by five will get us that. So let's multiply this one by two over two and multiply this one by five over five. All right, so they're gonna meet at 10, right? So put 10 on bottom. Three times two is gonna be six and one times five is gonna be five. So six minus five is gonna be one. So we have one tenth. That'll be the answer, okay? Uh, for number six, we have seven eighths take away two thirds. So thirds and eighths are the two denominators we have. Let's see when they meet for the first time. So eight and three, hmm, three's prime, and eight is made up of two, two, and two. So their GCF is one. So they had nothing in common besides one. And so if we go ahead and multiply these on the outside, we'll get the LCM or LCD. One times eight is eight, eight times three is 24. So the first time three and eight meet for the first time <laughs> is 24, okay? Uh, let's go ahead and see, how do we make these 20 fourths? Okay, so rewrite those fractions. We know eight times three is 24 and three times eight is 24. So for this one, let's times it by three over three and over here times eight over eight. If we do that, we're gonna get 20 fourths on the bottom for both. Seven times three is 21 and then two times eight is 16. So we have 21 minus 16, that's five. So our final answer is gonna be five 20 fourths and it can't be simplified because five is prime and doesn't go into 24. Let's check out seven. For seven, looks like we have fourths. We have three fourths and taking away some halves here. So when do four and two meet for the first time? Um, I think they have something in common here, right? They both have two in common. So two times two is four and two times one is two. So if we go ahead and multiply these outside numbers, two times two is four, four times one is still four. So the LCD here is going to be four. That's the first time they meet. So uh, let's see, take this three fourths, let's take away one half. How do we make them both fourths? Well, four times one will stay the same. Two times two will be four. So let's multiply this by one and one. I know it sounds a little silly to write that, but just trying to be extra clear, right? And so they're both gonna be in quarters or fourths. Three times one is gonna be three. One times two is gonna be two. Three minus two is one, so it's one fourth. For number eight, looks like we have sevenths and thirds. So here's the sevenths, here's the thirds. When do seven and three meet for the first time? So let's see, seven and three. They're both prime numbers, so they have to meet um, at when they multiply, right? So they have nothing in common, which is what happens uh, when their GCF is one. And so one times seven is seven, seven times three is 21. So the LCD is equal to 21, the first time they meet. Okay, so five sevenths take away one third and they meet at 21, right? So seven times three is 21, three times seven is 21. So for this one's do times three times three. And for this one's do times seven times seven. If we do that, we're gonna have 21 on bottom for both. Five times three is 15. One times seven is gonna be seven. So 15 minus seven is going to be eight. So we're gonna get eight over 21. So actually we couldn't simplify any of these so far. Um, looks like after we subtracted, they were all already done, already in most simplest terms. Okay, let's check out number nine. For number nine, we have three eighths take away one half. So we're talking about eighths and halves. So when do eight and two meet for the first time? Well, we know they're both even numbers, so we can divide them both by two. And two goes into eight four times, two goes into two one time. And I think that's it, because ones can't go any smaller. So if we go to multiply these on the outside, we should get the LCD. Two times four is eight. Eight times one is still eight. So the first time eight and two meet is going to be at eight. So let's see how we're gonna make that happen. So we have three eighths take away one half, all right? And so if we multiply eight times one, that's gonna be eight, and then two times four, that's going to be eight. So the eight to stay the same is just gonna multiply by one, and the two to become eight is gonna multiply by four. Okay, 
So they're gonna have the same denominator, or common denominator of eight. Three times one is going to be three. And then one times four is going to be four. So we have three minus four. So notice what weird thing is gonna happen here. If you have three minus four, that's actually negative one. And if you're not sure about how that works, if four minus three is equal to positive one, then three minus four equals negative one. So we have negative one over eight. And you can go ahead and just write your final answer with a negative in front here. So uh, hopefully that makes sense. If you take away more than what you have, you go into the negatives. And if that's a little confusing, then don't worry about it too much right now. You'll get used to it later on, okay? Um, but try not to overthink it, but it's just gonna be negative one instead of positive one, okay? For number 10, we have seven eighths take away three fourths. Okay, so when do eight and four meet for the first time? So eight and four, I'm thinking four goes into both, right? Four times two is eight and four times one is four. And we can go ahead and multiply these outside numbers. Four times two is eight, eight times one is still eight. So four and eight meet for the first time at eight. So let's go ahead and make them both the same. So seven eighths minus three fourths. So eight times one will get you eight and four times two will get you eight. So to stay the same times one times one to become eight times two times two. All right, so they're both gonna be eighths, okay? And then seven times one is seven, and then three times two is six, so seven minus six is gonna be one. So one eighth is gonna be our final answer. For 11, looks like we have this four ninths, so we're dealing with ninths minus thirds. So when do nine and three meet for the first time? Well. They're both multiples of three, so we should go ahead and take out a three. Three goes into nine three times, three goes into three one time. So if we go ahead and multiply these out on the outside, three times three is nine, nine times one is still gonna be nine. So the first time these meet, it's gonna be at nine, okay? So let's take the four ninths and take away the one third, but how can we rewrite these? We can say nine times one is nine, three times three is nine. So. So let's multiply this by one so that it stays at nine and the three's gotta multiply by three to get to nine, okay? And so let's go ahead and rewrite these uh, as one big fraction. So we know we're gonna have ninths and then four times one is four. One times three is three, so we have four minus three. That's gonna be one. So the answer here is gonna be one ninths. For number 12, we have five sixths and then one fourth. So those are the denominators. So when do six and four meet for the first time? Let's see here, six and four, they're both even, so two is a common factor. Two times three is six, two times two is four. And I think three and two are done because they're neighbor numbers, they have nothing else in common, especially if they're right next to each other. Two times three is six, six times two is 12, so the LCD, or the first time six and four meet, is gonna be at 12. So let's take this five, six, and take away this one fourth, and let's make them both 12. So how do you get to 12 from six? Six times two four times three. So multiply this one by two over two, multiply this one by three over three. So if we do that, they'll both be over 12. So five times two is 10, one times three is three, so 10 minus three is going to be seven. So we're gonna have seven twelfths. Cool, that's number 12. For 13, let's see what we got here. For 13, looks like we have ninths and six. So we have seven ninths, we're taking away one six. So when do nine and six meet for the first time? Let's go ahead and see. You can't divide them by two because nine's odd, but I think three is a factor of both. Three times three is nine and three times two is six. And if we go ahead and see what uh, you get when you multiply these on the outside, this three times three is nine, nine times two is 18. So the LCD, where the first time they meet is gonna be 18. So let's take this seven ninths, let's take away this one six, and we're trying to get to 18, right? So nine times two is 18 and six times three is 18. So times two, times two, and times three, and times three. So use those diagonals to help you, okay? They will always get you what you're looking for if you've set it up correctly. So we'll have 18th. Seven times two is 14. One times three is three. So we have 14 minus three, which is 11. So we have 11 18ths. Should check to simplify, but 11's prime and it's not a factor of 18, so you can't. For number 14, we have eight and three. So when do eight and three meet for the first times? So we have eight and three. Three's prime, right? And it doesn't go into eight, so that means that the GCF is one. 
So the eight and three just swing on down and we can just multiply three times eight, that's gonna be 24. So again, when they have nothing in common, you can just multiply them. If they do have something in common, you have to be careful. All right, so 24 is where they meet for the first time for this eight and this three. And so let's take this three eighths and let's take away that one third. And let's see. So times three times three on the left and then times eight times eight on the right. And if you do that, we should both have the fractions be over 24. And then so three times three is nine, one times eight is eight. So nine minus eight is gonna be one. So we're gonna have one 24ths. Last couple, let's see 15 here. For 15, looks like we're dealing with 12ths here. We have seven 12ths and we're taking away ninths. So we have one over nine. So when do 12 and nine meet for the first time? Let's see, 12 and nine, I don't think they, actually they have three in common, right? So three goes into 12 four times, three goes into nine three times. And I think that's going to be it because four and three are right next to each other. So they can't have anything in common anymore. So uh, three times four is gonna be 12, 12 times three is 36. So the first time these two numbers meet is gonna be at 36. So let's go ahead and rewrite this. We have seven twelfths take away one ninth, okay? In order to do that, we need common denominators. So how does a 12 become 36? 12 times three, nine times four. So let's do times three times three times four times four. Use those diagonals. And so we will have 36. Seven times three is 21. One times four is going to be four. So what's 21 minus four? It's gonna be 17. So 17 over 36, okay? Then you're done. And finally, for number 16, we have seven tenths minus one fourth. So we have tenths minus fourths here. So when does 10 and four meet for the first time? Let's see here. They're both even numbers. So two goes into both, goes in five times here and two times here. And if we go ahead and multiply these, five times two is gonna be 10 times two is 20. So the LCD here is going to be 20, the first time they meet. So let's take the seven tenths, let's take away this one fourth, but we need to get them to be 20. So how do we get that? 10 times two is 20, five times four is 20. So times this one by two over two and multiply this one by five over five. If we do that, both denominators will be 20, which is great. And then seven times two is 14. One times five is going to be five. So 14 minus five is going to be nine. So we're gonna get nine over 20. All right, so that's it. There you have 16 different practice problems where you are subtracting fractions with uncommon denominators. So use that ladder method or use maybe the prime factorization method, whatever you'd like, or skip count to get when they meet for the first time. Once you get common denominators, you can subtract. Maybe just make sure you multiply the top and the bottom by the same number. And that's basically it. And none of these could be simplified after you subtract it. So that was kind of nice. We didn't have to worry about that in this set of problems. If you found this video helpful, please consider giving it a thumbs up. And as always, keep up the great work that you're already doing, and I'll see you in the next one.